Jake Arrieta is often a forgotten name in the baseball community, but I'd like to change that, because during the mid-2010s he was one of the most feared pitchers in baseball, with an arsenal which sent shivers down opposing teams' backs, helped the Cubs break their over 100-year World Series curse, and managed to have one of the greatest single-season performances since the mound was lowered back in 1969. So sit back, relax, and let's relive his career from his difficult rise to fame, which included the thought of retiring early, the changes he made to become a Cy Young Award winner, and all the incredible records he finds himself holding. Arietta was drafted three times in his career before finally signing with the Baltimore Orioles who took him in the fifth round of the 2007 draft and found himself in the big leagues after moving through each rank of the minor leagues fairly quickly. In 2008 at high A, he tossed a 2.87 ERA in 30 starts with an impressive 9.6 Ks per 9. In 2009 stretch between AA and AAA, he held a cumulative 3.4 ERA across 28 starts and finally in 2010 he started the season at AAA where he was lights out with a 185 5 ERA across 12 appearances, earning himself a call up to the big leagues and made his debut against the mighty New York Yankees. The reigning World Series champions had gotten off to a fast start with a 37 and 22 record entering the game and sported a star studded lineup including the likes of Robinson Cano, Alex Rodriguez, and of course the captain, Derek Jeter, who was coincidentally Arietta's first batter he faced and he had this to say about the situation after the game. I remember the sensation of levitating off the mound when Jeter's name was announced as the first guy I was going to face and the 28,000 Yankee fans in attendance at Camden Yards went nuts. Arietta started off the at bat with two quick balls to fall behind early in the count, putting Jeter directly in the driver's seat. Because for his career after the count got to 2-0, he more often than not got on base with a 531 OBP and over 1000 OPS, but Arietta fought back and got Jeter to chase at what would have been ball 3, and on the very next pitch Jeter grounded a ball softly to second baseman Scott Moore for his first out in the major leagues. A special moment for any ball player, but he had no time to celebrate with the likes of Nick Swisher and Mark Teixeira due up next but he retired them comfortably with a pop up to the third baseman and then a 3-1 put out for out number 3. The score however did not remain scoreless as in the next inning Curtis Granderson knocked home the Yankees first run of the game with a triple to deep right field. And then in the third two more runs came home via an RBI double by Derek Jeter and sack fly by Nick Swisher. Then in the sixth with the score now tied Arietta faced even more trouble by allowing a leadoff double and a sack bunt to put to share on third with just one out. Because of this, Robinson Cano was intentionally walked in order to put the double play in line and to face Jorge Posada, which worked. He got him to fly out not deep enough to score the runner from third, and after another intentional walk to Curtis Granderson, the bases were loaded with Marcus Thames up to the plate. Get him out and Arietta would finish with a quality start in his first outing against great opposition, give up a hit and it would blow the game wide open. And on the fourth pitch of the at bat, he was able to retire Thames via a punch out and following Adam Jones's RBI double in the bottom half of the inning, the O's went ahead 4-3 and managed to shut out the Yankees bats in the last three innings, giving Arietta the win in his major league debut over veteran AJ Burnett. And after the game, he had this to say specifically about retiring Derek Jeter in his first encounter. That was an incredible moment to kick off my career. What better way than to face a guy like that? I got him out, he had a ground ball to second, and I was like, maybe I can do this. Arietta was right, he had managed to get the juggernaut Yankee bats to go rather quiet in his debut, but this success wouldn't last long and in the rest of his time with the Orioles he struggled, finishing 2010 with a 466 ERA in 18 starts, then in 2011 a 505, in 2012 a 620, and in the first half of the 2013 season an ugly 723 ERA, resulting in a demotion on April 21st 2013 for the second year in a row following a performance against the Los Angeles Dodgers where he tossed four innings of two-hit ball, but shot himself in the foot allowing five walks and hitting a batter ultimately costing him five earned runs. After the game, he had this to say about the struggles he had been facing recently and over the previous few seasons. I just wasn't doing my job well enough, that's the bottom line, he said before clearing out his locker. The team needs me to be better, and in his talk with manager Buck Showalter, he said we talked about high anxiety situations and he pretty much asked me why do you have high anxiety in any situation with the stuff you have. Arietta said basically I told him that I just want to be what my team needs me to be, sometimes I create anxiety for myself so I just need to limit that. He went on to state I let previous instances creep up in my thought process sometimes, I think that's where things go awry and that's where the walks come in, I'm not giving up many hits just putting them on base for free. I just got to command the ball better in the strike zone, that's pretty much it. It's clear the problem he was facing was solely his mental strength. 
It seemed like he could have been getting too high on the highs and too lows on the lows, which is never a formula for success, and for athletes, he must remain in a neutral state if you want to perform to the best of your ability. It was also at this time where the thought of retiring crossed his mind, stating he looked at his newborn son Cooper and realized that he didn't like what the misery of pitching was doing to him as a father and husband. However, an hour or so later, the competitor inside Arietta sounded an alarm. How crazy an idea is that? That you would stop playing this game you love. Because of this, he decided to go back to AAA and after a few more underwhelming months, those gave him one more chance by bringing him up to start against the Detroit Tigers on June 17th. In which he didn't walk many batters with just one over four and two thirds innings, but was tagged with five earned runs from 10 hits. And just a couple short weeks later, on July 2nd, he was moved by the club to the Chicago Cubs with Pedro Strope and Cash for Steve Clevenger and Scott Feldman, officially ending his bumpy seven-year tenure in Baltimore. When he made the jump over to Chicago, there were a few things he and pitching coach Chris Bozio worked on. For starters, he moved back to pitching from the third base side of the rubber, focused on keeping his head in line with home plate to not over-rotate, and a shorter stride for a more consistent release point for his fastball, which in turn helped his kill pitches in the slider and cutter to be more effective. He had 9 starts with the Cubs to finish off 2013 and was effective with a 366 ERA, but with a 494 FIP, 4.2 walks per 9, and only 6.4 strikeouts per 9, it was safe to say he was still far from being a front of the rotation arm and needed to get back to work in the offseason in order to replicate the mid-3 ERA he found to end off 2013 over the course of a full season. During the winter months, Arietta worked extensively to be in the best shape he could be both physically and mentally, and the way he set out to achieve this was, of all things, doing Pilates. For those of you who are not familiar with the term, Pilates is doing a series of controlled movements to improve strength and flexibility throughout the body. All of this hard work led up to 2014 spring training, but before he made an appearance, he stated he felt too strong too soon and ended up hurting his shoulder, causing him to miss the first month of the season. So while Pilates was definitely great to make you stronger physically and mentally, Jake, maybe you should have done it just four times a week instead of six. But anyways, he got back out to the mound for his season debut on May 3rd against the Cardinals and dominated, pitching five and a third scoreless innings with seven strikeouts for the win. He went on to continue this dominant run, finishing the month of May with a 3.2 ERA across five starts before shutting everyone down. Do you remember when I mentioned all the changes he made in order to get more strikes with his fastball, which would allow his slider and cutter to help end at bats quicker? Well, it was all working. In 2013, when he moved to the Cubs, he still allowed 4.2 walks per nine and only 6.4 strikeouts per nine. With the improvements in these pitches, he lowered his walks per nine to 2.4, the lowest of his career at that point, and 9.6 strikeouts per nine, the highest of his career. All in all, he finished the season with a 2.53 ERA with a much more convincing 2.26 FIP and posted other career bests like in innings pitched and strikeouts per walk. It wasn't a full season for Arietta, but he managed to place ninth in Cy Young voting and officially put every hitter on watch as he finally learned how to command his pitches, which had already been described as some of the best in the league. For example, first baseman Paul Canerico told Baltimore first baseman Chris Davis, that's the nastiest guy I've seen in the past five years, and catcher Buster Posey he said, you don't see a guy who can two seam the ball at 95 and throw a cutter at 93 94. Usually it's one or the other, and he's got a power curveball to go with them. With everything pointing towards an even bigger breakout in 2015, all Arietta had to do was stay healthy. After all, that was the only thing holding him back from being labeled as a top five pitcher of the 2014 season. So during the offseason, he got back to work with a reformer in the garage, made sure not to become too strong too fast and injure himself in spring training, and put everything on display during the 2015 season. To start the campaign, he found success and held a 3.4 ERA through 13 starts, as well as continuing his trend of limiting walks while striking out more than one per inning. But June 21st is when his whole arsenal clicked, and following a complete game shutout against the Minnesota Twins, he was unstoppable. In his final 20 starts, he went 16-1 with a .86 ERA and 1.94 FIP. But what's equally impressive is that he held batters to just a 151 average, 200 OBP, and a 210 slugging for an OPS of 410 during this time. The crown jewel of games, of course, coming on August 30th against the Los Angeles Dodgers, in which he tossed the 14th no-hitter in Cubs history and was just one walk away from 
tossing a perfecto. And after his final start of the season against the Milwaukee Brewers, in which he tossed another quality start with six scoreless innings and seven Ks, he finished a historic season. In total across 33 starts, he had a 22 and six record, a 177 ERA, four complete games, three of which being shutouts, and led the league in hits per nine as well as home runs per nine. In route to winning one of the most incredible Cy Young awards in league history, as the other two finalists, Zach Ranky and Clayton Kershaw, could have easily won in practically any other year. That's just a testament of how incredible Arietta was. In fact, since the mound was lowered in 1968, it's been one of the best. To start off, he tossed 20 straight quality starts to end the season, the seventh most in baseball history, joining Chris Carpenter, Greg Maddox, Dwight Gooden, Johan Santana, Frambler Valdez, and Bob Gibson, who holds the record with 26. But this stat is merely just scratching the surface. In terms of Chicago Cubs history, you have to go back all the way to 1919 to find a pitcher with as low of an ERA as Arietta's 1.6. 77 mark. Because since 1969, only five other Cubs pitchers have tossed an ERA at 2.49 or below. In fact, the distance between him and second place Kyle Hendricks is the same between him and sixth place Bill Hands. That's how far and away his ERA was in first place. But what's even more impressive is that his ERA wasn't just good in terms of the Chicago Cubs, it was elite among MLB history. Of guys with a sub-2 ERA since the mound was lowered, Jake Arrieta has been just one of 21 joining a list of players from this generation such as Justin Verlander, Jacob deGrom, Blake Snell, Clayton Kershaw, and Zach Ranke. A list of three surefire Hall of Famers, deGrom who will most likely make it dependent on injuries, and Blake Snell who would still need a few more good years. And finally, I'd like to share one more all-time stat with you. His second half ERA of .75 is the lowest in MLB history since the stat became official over 100 years ago. To me, that just shows how incredible of a job he did down the stretch, which is when baseball matters the most. He put the Cubs in a position to win every time he stepped foot on the mound in the toughest division in baseball that saw the three highest win total teams battle it out for first place. Unfortunately for the Cubs, they were one of the two that did not get the bye and had to face a one-game elimination. But fortunately for them, Arietta was fresh and ready to go, where once again he did not disappoint, tossing a complete game shutout with 11 Ks to send the Bucks packing out of their own ballpark. It was a truly magical performance on a must-win night, and while he did struggle in his next two playoff starts, he once again manned the Cubs rotation in 2016 and was one of the main contributors to their championship win over Cleveland with only three earned runs in his 11 innings during the Fall Classic. This was undoubtedly the peak of Arietta's playing days, and as years went by, his ERA grew higher and higher. He even mentioned just a few years after his championship run that he knew his playing days were over. I was at a point where I was doing everything I possibly could to make things work. Unfortunately, I came to this realization around the 19th season that, man, my body feels amazing, but the shoulder, the old whip, it doesn't rotate the way it used to. And whether I like it or not, that's just kind of where things were going. Then, just a couple short years later in 2021, Arietta did make a return to Wrigley, and while he didn't perform like the old shutdown version of himself the Cubs faithful were used to, I'm sure they were still happy to see him back in Cubs blue, even if it was just for a few more months. That wraps it up for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a comment regarding your favorite memory of Jake Arrieta, like the vid to help the channel reach more like-minded people, as well as subscribing to stay up to date with multiple videos each week. Thank you in advance, and I will see you in the next one.